Hello, everybody, and welcome to a mini of your time where I take a mini of your heart, soul, mind, and taste buds because I usually just talk a bunch of mini Reese's pieces of shit. Um, my guest today is better than me in every aspect of being an individual, in so <clears throat> upstanding individual in society, someone who's a fellow peer of mine, someone who is widely loved in the IWC because of her positive approach towards all things pro wrestling. Say hello to my friend, Wheezy. Wheezy, tell us how you're doing today. Hi, I'm doing fabulous. I'm having such a good day. Uh, I got off work, you know, a little bit ago. And, you know, uh, thank you for saying nice things about me and saying that I'm positive because uh, it's hard out here. It was real hard out here. I think you're the most positive streamer creator that we have besides Simon Miller. I kind of wanted to put you up there, you know? Well, thanks. Thanks. I, I, I love being on that level. Which you are, Wheezy, and you got to give yourself some more credit. I try. <laughs> Wheezy, we are here to talk about the title of the video. And the title of the video is that we are too emotional for wrestling. I know. Continue. <laughs> I, I just, especially just the last, I feel like I've been extra emotional the last two weeks, especially. So bring it. <laughs> So I myself am very reactionary to things that happen in pro wrestling and involving talent stories and just general life situations. Um, and usually the life situations overlap while we're streaming. What has been your experience with showing emotions as a wrestling content creator and streamer? It's been pretty split. Like majority of the time, I don't get a lot of crap from people about showing emotions, right? Because if I show that I am excited or that I'm crying or sad or whatever, a lot of the time there's a lot of people in the comment section that are like, hey, um, I reacted the same way or I also cried or it also made me feel a certain way. And then on the flip side, then there's also the entire group of people that don't understand why you're showing any emotion. Like, why would you be emotional to this? Why would you feel this way about this? It's just wrestling. Do you not understand that this isn't real? Like, does she know? And I'm like, don't insult me for one. <laughs> like, I know. But everyone is different and everyone experiences things different and experiences emotions different and reacts to things differently. And that's okay. We don't have to react to something the same way because that would be boring. And even though people don't like us being emotional or invested in the storyline, we don't go to anybody else and say, why are you reacting to this? Or, hey, you should be more emotional. We don't care. Like, we we allow people to enjoy wrestling the way that they're enjoying wrestling. And I think you and I do a great job with, like, being ourselves, but also having our little characters. Right. Because you're a Wheezy Blonde, which, which by the way, can you tell the audience why you're called Wheezy Blonde? Because I, for one, love it. I'm Wheezy Blonde because I have asthma. Wheezy oh. was we wheezing. I don't have my inhaler near me to prove it, but because I wheeze, right? Especially you'll notice that sometimes when I'm laughing, I do have a wheeze. Or if I'm actually like having an attack, I wheeze. And there was also a YouTuber. His name was Wheezy Waiter. And I loved him very much back when I was in high school. And so I, oh. I stole it. I stole it. When you told me the reason, I was like, that's fucking phenomenal. <laughs> People, <laughs> was, she's Lil Wayne. Like, no, I loved Lil Wayne. Everyone did. I love Lil Wayne. Still do. But no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So experience, experiencing emotions in different ways as a streamer, uh, we can have emotions towards a certain story. But in real life situations, have you ever found yourself just being just so overwhelmed by your actual life behind the screen stuff that it that it exemplifies in your actual streaming or content? Yes, because it just happened. <laughs> um, on Monday, I logged on for Monday Night Raw, doing my thing. I'd had a shit week. I'd had a shit weekend. I had been in urgent care. I My health had like taken a fucking nosedive. And I wanted to stream because it also felt like the one thing that was going to make me feel better because I, I love streaming, right? Mm -hmm. But I just was in a weird headspace and I'd had a lot of crappy comments uh, about taking time off from streaming the week before. And I just was comparing myself to other people that I wasn't working as hard. I wasn't doing anything. And I got to the end of stream and started talking about it. And I just was like, you know, I feel like I get picked on because I'm a girl and I don't feel like any of the other male uh, streamers get as much or the same kind of shit that we do. And I just was in my feelings about it on top of just everything else in my life that had snowballed up 
between work and family and not feeling well. And so, yeah, it leaks in and it affects you. And I'm not afraid to show it, even though sometimes I don't feel like I have a choice. I feel like my body's just like, hey, bitch, you're going to cry. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, I'm right there with you because I try not to make my identity about like everything that's happening with me, you know, but sometimes right. it it leaks in because you have your chat. They think they know you. They just see you as, well, our communities know, know us, but there's people that don't know us. So we read the comments. We have people co coming in on chat and don't treat us as if we're human. They kind of just see that we're just products. They kind of say some things that are just very, very direct as if they sort of know you, but it's like, there's so many things happening behind yes. the lens. Right. Um, yeah. And I'm the same way. I remind chat. I'm a human being. I work a lot. There's a lot of things that are happening that I don't want to talk about because I will just cry. <laughs> I will yeah. cry and I will break down. And I was racing home to start my stream. Mm -hmm. I have a second monitor. I clicked the on button, but as I was doing it, because I was in a rush and it's, it's sort of slanted I have no stand for it. I know that's irresponsible. So when I press on, it fell down. It cracked. I oh, got on. Me. I got on stream. I was like, "Hi, I'm here. I'm working with the monitor, and a cracked one." I started crying because I'm just like, I don't have time. Like I was in a rush. Blah blah. I started oh. crying. Um, and then towards the end of the stream, I'm not gonna name the person, but they came from your stream that oh, no. is, that watches the both of us, and they were like. This person said, "If when Minnie cries, it's okay, but when Wheezy cries, the the whole internet is mad." And I, I was like, "Don't compare, don't compare," because that's yeah. Kind of I that would have taken that. that. I would have taken that a certain way too. It's like they don't. They just don't think. They don't think at all. <laughs> really, where that's weird that you're comparing this because I'm talking to my community. I'm not talking about the general audience. That yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And everyone's allowed to like cry and have emotions. And I would have cried too. like what happened? What happened last? It might have just been oh, I, I did a gaming stream last week and I forgot to I use restream. So you know when you like schedule, yeah. Okay, well, I fucking didn't do that. So I went live and YouTube wasn't live. And now I don't know if they changed something. You can't just change it. You can't just make it so that you go live in the right place on YouTube. And it drives me insane. I don't know why that's a thing. Or I couldn't figure it out if, if uh -huh. uh, something changed. And so I was yeah. really frustrated and I just immediately, it was like, I know, like I had a toot, like it just on my face. I just was like, of course, it's another thing. Yeah. It's just another thing that's going wrong. It's fine. Cause you have an entire chat of people being like, you're not live on YouTube. Hey, you're not live on YouTube. Hey, you're not live mm -hmm. on YouTube. You're not in the right place. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I know. And I yeah. can't do anything about it. Um, <laughs> And you I have to start a whole stream to, and the whole stream to make it work. You want to have fun. I'm assuming this was like a random, random stream where, where you were like, I'm going to play a game and I'm going to have fun. And then technical yeah. difficulties happen. Yeah. For the first 25 minutes. I'm like, every time I try to do something that's not wrestling, something goes wrong. I'm like, motherfucker. Samantha Irvin had a similar reaction to her ex expressing emotions as a ring announcer. With emotions comes happiness, excitement, and, you know, when we cry, that's an issue. Samantha Irvin cried. She got a lot of hate from mostly men who said that they don't like their ring announcers crying. What was your reaction and thoughts to seeing the hate that she got for just being a fan of wrestling? Do you think she should have kept it professional or do you think her emotions made our emotions validated? It's a loaded. So it's like a loaded question, right? Because on one hand, I'm like. No, like I'm glad that she validated emotions and did what she did. But at the same time, I'm like, where did the idea come from that she has to be – what is like what is professional as a ring announcer? Like when the fuck did we give ring announcers a set of criteria for what they need to be in order for them to be considered professional? It just felt like the weirdest thing to gripe about, the weirdest thing to blow up about because it was so – random. I don't know that anyone has ever had that kind of reaction to somebody doing that. Not that that's not because it, well, one, it hadn't happened before. And the only thing that 
you know, you I can come up with as to why the reaction was the way that it was is because, and I hate that, I hate that, but it, because she's a woman. Like what, mm -hmm. what else, what else is there? You, what do you mean you don't want her to show emotion? What, what did that hurt you? What did that hurt is it, the biggest thing. Yeah. And not only that, she wasn't the only one to show emotion during that entire thing. Like at the end of WrestleMania 40, you had Seth Rollins crying on the outside of the ring and tears and just emotional. And, you know, he's pointing at Cody Rhodes and he's like, you fucking deserve it, man. Like was so overcome with his own emotions. And that's the first time that motherfucker's cried. That boy cries a lot. If you look back. <laughs> He has. He's cried at a yeah. lot of shit yeah. on camera. Football. Uh, <laughs> I hate football. <laughs> he cried. Well, I blame him. He's a Bears fan. Uh, but, and the internet praised him and was just like, "Let's just shows how good of a dude Rollins is. That just shows he's such a good dude. He cares about the beat. Came out here and he was injured and he still did this and and yet it's not okay that Samantha Irvin cried announcing Cody Rhodes." Because Cole did too mm -hmm. while he was talking about it at the mm -hmm. end. So the only thing that none of them have in common is that she's a woman. So there was also that moment with Cole and Cody Rhodes where at the end of it, Cody Rhodes goes to like shake his hand or and try to give him yeah. a hug. And Michael Cole is sobbing. And he's just like, I'm so proud of you. We heard praise off of all of that and yes that should be praise yes absolutely. absolutely praise that but also keep in mind that samantha irving is doing the same thing that these two men did but the only difference is that she's a woman and you sort of want to be more controlling of how you want her job to be when michael cole is a commentator and seth rollins is, is a wrestler so what it what it What's I want Samantha Irvin. So, so this is me being this is me being the internet, right? This is, mm -hmm. I want Samantha Irvin to sit there and shut up and look pretty for me and announce things mm -hmm. funny. That's what mm -hmm. I want Samantha Irvin to be. I don't want Samantha Irvin to be a human and have her own emotions and feel a certain way. This is the way I want her to be. And because she's not being the way I want her to be, I'm gonna throw a fucking fit. Is exactly what that sounds like to me, and that just makes me even angrier. <laughs> and it's also kind of like because Samantha Irvin is a woman you don't see her as a fan. Michael Cole is a fan of the sport. Mm -hmm. Seth Rollins is a fan of the sport. That's why they're getting emotional. So when Samantha Irvin got emotional, they're just kind of like, no, you have to do your job. Damn. So they, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, like it's kind of like, no, you're just there to do your job because you're really not a fan of this sport. Like they just hired you. My favorite thing, because of your looks. Oh my when God. No, I hadn't even, like that's one that I hadn't even like, thought of but that exists it exists in so many it, it exists in football and it has for a long time you know whether you're like a football content creator the women that first started being on the sidelines there you know all the reporters and all of them i mean immediately they act like oh you're not you know what you're talking about you're not you're not a fan what the fuck are you doing out here why they got some some girl out here reporting on something that she knows nothing about but it's with samantha irvin she she actually is yeah i know yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. she's been a fucking fan <laughs> Her whole life. I know. <laughs> like, let's keep in mind that there are a lot of fans that started watching because of The Rock. So Samantha Irvin actually being emotional to the sport, seeing a woman be emotional to the sport and women that aren't necessarily watching wrestling, but they're like, I might be interested in this, seeing her be emotional. Do you not think that's going to bring more of like a fandom towards wrestling? No, it absolutely could. It absolutely could. And I feel not to like toot our own horns either but it what we do does the same thing you know mm -hmm. the women that that the, the women wrestlers right now make that more accessible or makes it seem like it's more something that they would want to be into samantha is is one of those people we are some of those people the women that work backstage are those people the uh, jackie redmonds of the world the kathy kelly's of the world the renee paquettes of the world you know it really really does even you'll like the sexy red Hell yeah. The sexy, the sexy Hell yeah. The world. Going on there yeah. and just be like, hey, I love this. And I'm here yeah. I am doing this. You know, that's what we want. You want more people to, or more women to 
not look at it as this thing that, oh, it's a thing that I've always liked and I can't like it either. It's yeah. Been my entire, you know, it's been my entire life. I don't, I don't like that. I want everyone, I want everyone to give it a shot. I'm not gatekeeping. Like, please, more women, come watch. So I know you and I get a lot of shit from Live Stands. Uh, they hate us. And uh, we give our general constructive criticism towards Liv Morgan. Do you get a lot of people thinking you hate a certain individual or that you're not understanding that it's a storyline because you are playing into the story as you're reacting? Yes. <laughs> uh, Liv, you know, Liv and Dom are the the biggest example because I just run with the way that the story is being presented, right? Mm -hmm. Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan conspire together to screw over Rhea Ripley. I saw it live. I was there. I saw it happen in real time. Okay. I've watched that shit and I didn't think it was happening. I told the whole internet, no, it's not going to happen at SummerSlam. I said, Dom's not actually, he's not doing anything. I really did. I was, and that's, mm -hmm. I defended his dumb ass. <laughs> I defended him. And he went and pulled that in front of me. Here I am. Here I am. Do here I am doing exactly what people don't understand. Here I am doing it. Mm -hmm. I, I live for, uh, live i live for the stories in professional wrestling it's it's part of it it's not just the action and, and the anal analysis and the criticism that people put it's a story it's it's a tv show it's a script it's fun and they're playing characters Dominic mysterio is a merry fucking man like <laughs> he has a whole ass life he plays this character on tv and the entire point of the way he's presented is that he's a little shit he's fine man a weasel mm -hmm. He's a weasel. He he cries about the fact that he did hard time. Yeah. Am I supposed to take that seriously? Am I supposed yeah. to sit here and just be like, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? <laughs> and then um, he got a BMW instead of a Mercedes Benz. That's what he cries about. Like, that's right. But we're no, but but but, but we're supposed to take it serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my deadbeat dad. <laughs> he posts all kinds of goofy shit, like making fun of it, you know. It's chicken tendies. I got the chicken. I only <laughs> like ranch. What do you mean? I like, I don't know. At this, I think there's just a lot of people that don't know. And it's not, you know, I'm not knocking anybody, but just don't know how to have fun with things. Mm -hmm. They just don't know how to have fun. I shouldn't have to sit here and explain in a five page dissertation why I can watch Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan on screen and give them shit and boo and whatever, whatever. And in the same breath say, man, they've come a long way in two years. I'm so proud of Liv Morgan for clawing her way and doing everything that she has done on her own because she didn't have someone get her in the door. She didn't have a, a famous dad or anybody to do that. And for Dominic Mysterio to be doubted when he um, first debuted because he didn't start in NXT. He got to, he got to start right on the main roster in the storyline with, with his, his dad and Rollins. So you can do the same things in the same breath. I shouldn't have to explain. You should. You should just. You should just under. You should just understand. But that's the way that the wrestling world has operated for so long. We're so used to the harsh criticism and the analysis podcasts and the people on Twitter that are very harsh on it. So when you have people like us that are just having fun and just having fun with it, and you've got people, we do this every time. Right? We do this every time. You got people. <laughs> I'm just gonna say his name, Santi. He, <laughs> no, 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 I'm no, 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 no. I'm editing that out. I'm editing that out. out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He will sit on. He has glazed Dominic Mysterio from day one. He's a day one glazer. Okay, and that's what he has chosen to do with his. Like that's fine, <laughs> but. When I show just a little bit of appreciation for Dominic Mysterio, it turns into, oh, that, no, 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 that's Santi's niche. You can't do that. That's what he does. And I'm like, you guys are insufferable. You guys are insufferable. Yeah. Just let us live. Live. Ha. Uh, <laughs> also, you and I are actually huge. Like, we love Dom and Liv. Like, like we're we so are. At, yeah, yeah. Like, we're fans of their art, which is why we react to their art accordingly. And I feel like if we didn't, we would not actually enjoy what they're doing because so I sort of fi I figured it's not like I knew, but I figured that Dom was going to align with Liv Morgan. But I love 
<laughs> no, 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 no. But I love that. Like you didn't see that coming because when it happened, you reacted. You had emotions towards the sport, towards what was happening. They got your ass, which is I, what's the whole point of wrestling. <laughs> I was recording my reactions because I was there live. And so I was recording reactions when I thought things were going to be happening or towards the end of end of matches. Mm -hmm. I did not think that that was happening. So I was not recording myself when they, when, when it happened, mm -hmm. I uh, went uh, and then it was, and I hurried up and I like turned it on and I just was speak. I was speechless. The people sitting around me were laughing at me because I just was like, <laughs> are you fucking, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. I was beside myself. So if you want to say that I overreact on stream, uh, you should see me at, at a show. <laughs> You're fun. talking to someone that people think that uh, overreacts all the time. They hated my CM Punk return reaction because they were like, all right, girl, like you're overreacting. You're doing too much. And it's just kind of like CM Punk is the reason why I started watching wrestling again, not started again. And I'm just kind of like, you cool. can't win. You can't win because yeah. I underreacted. <laughs> No, I did react enough. I did react enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what, yeah. what do you want? <laughs> what works? And I saw the hate that you got too. And then you made this, actually, this is good. Because you made this fake reaction that, okay. and then you went on this news um, interview, I guess I want to oh, say. My local and then, news interviewed yeah. me. And then, and then they, they showed. Used... <laughs> they used my fake reaction. I was like, Joshua, what did you do? I was standing in the chair spinning in a circle. <laughs> they used that. That wasn't even the real reaction. Oh my God. You and I are in the space, in the same space of doing content creation and live streaming. We get a lot of shit. We get a lot of hate. We get told over and over again that we're just doing this for attention. What would you like to say to all of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say that if, because it's just, it's, more work and more dedication than that. And it's like, if I really wanted to get some kind of attention from something, of all things, why would I pick professional wrestling? Why would that be the thing that I pick? I could go and be an Instagram model of some sort and be just a, a regular ass influencer and just post some cool pictures of me in a bikini every now and then. And then I could, I could just be a regular influencer. Like that would be fine. I don't, that's not me. I don't, I don't want to do, I don't want to do it. That's just not me. Um, and not only that, but there's, like I said, there's so much more involved. I do this for the love of the game. I do it because I like it. I have built this entire studio over the course of three, four years. I watch wrestling as much as I can with in my means. And if I was just in this for attention, what the fuck would I be giving up all of my days off? Why would I be here sitting, giving up my Friday nights, my Saturday nights for PLEs? I give up so much time. I don't have regular days off. And then sometimes even that's not enough because that gets criticized of like, well, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do this? It's just constant. You're never actually doing enough. So if people think that I am doing this for attention or that anyone that does what I do for just attention, because it is nice to have, it is, it is nice to have a following. It is, it is fun. It's something I always, I always wanted to be a YouTuber, but that's not the main reason. Everyone that does this and, and is good at it and has some kind of success at it has a, I don't want to say like a higher purpose to it, but you have mm -hmm. to, you have to have a goal as to why you're doing it. It can't just be, oh, I want attention or, oh, I want, I want to be an influencer or, oh, I want to be a streamer. Okay. Well, yeah. why, why mm -hmm. do you want to be a streamer? You have to have a reason. And I, it's the first thing I'll ask people when they say that, oh, I want to be a content creator. Okay. Why? What is it about it that makes you want to be one? And if you can't give me an answer, you you really got to look deeper. Otherwise it's not going to work. I think you and I do a good job with like, so, so like just speaking about attention, like it's like we don't necessarily want to get attention from wrestling fans in the way that they think that we just want to sort of milk out because they're going to be simps or whatever uh -huh. shit like that. Because it's like if we are actually doing it for those reasons, we still have to endure the suffrage of like just wrestling fans <laughs> because wrestling fans are very uh, analytical and if we are actually fake fans, we would have been ousted. That's such a that is such a good point because 
you would think, and that's, I think a lot of people's thought process is they just, they don't understand. They think that like, oh, these girls, because I've heard, I've had it said to me, oh, these mm -hmm. girls picked this thing because it's mostly men. And so they're going to get followers and they're going to get attention for that reason. Wrestling fans really are different mm -hmm. because while they'll first pay attention to you because, oh, well, she pretty, you marry me, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> they care that you know what you're talking about. That yeah. they are, they mm -hmm. will not pay attention to you if you don't seem like you care or know what you're talking about. People that are real professional wrestling fans take this shit very seriously. Like they really, really do. Mm -hmm. And not only that, we are still women, even with, with like most what I have going on, some of the most popular people in this space and that have the most support are men. It is a different animal. They do support the male their their male counterparts way more than they do women. They just do. It's just the way that it is. Uh, we really have to work harder. We have to work so much harder. I've had other I've had other male content creators and and media personality and wrestlers tell me that exact thing. We have to work so much harder. It's a very different thing for what we do. It sucks, yeah. but it's true. It sucks. And we could be here in hoodies. We could be here with no makeup. We could be here. Oh just my God. When I come on here without makeup, like... the world is, the world is fucking ending. The, the world, world is fucking ending. birds. <laughs> I don't really care. Like, I know I look a little different without it on. I'm white. What the fuck do you want from me? We look dead if we don't go in the sun. What do you want? <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry that I don't, you know, I'm sorry. I have a little purple under my eyes. I'm fucking Russian as shit. What do you want from me? <laughs> I didn't know you were Russian. Oh, damn. Yeah. 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 But like we could be doing all that, right? We could be chilling, not not even like catering like any sort of like sexual emotion for like the community or anything like that. We we could just be here watching fucking wrestling and shit, and they're just like they're doing this for attention. <laughs> and if they're not gonna say that, they're gonna be like, "Wow, why does she look like this? Why does she?" Why does she talk like this when our male counterparts, who are very lovely, by the way, but their audience doesn't talk about their looks. They don't talk about how they speak. They don't talk about their knowledge. They don't even try to question their knowledge. No, no, no that's a, another great point. Yeah, they're the things about them, like their appearance, don't get brought up. It's something that happens with us. The way that I speak, the way that I cuss, uh, the way that I, I look, the way that my hair is, the way, the way that I'm dressing, whether I'm wearing makeup, whether I'm not wearing makeup, I should smile more. I look angry. Uh, another thing I get a lot is I am a very direct communicator. I, t I talk for a living. I've, I've, I've always talked for a living. I've been on a microphone for a while now. I don't have a problem talking. I don't have a problem yapping. But I've always been a direct communicator. So if somebody says something to me uh, and they want an answer or – they are disrespectful to me, I will tell them a straight answer in a respectful way. You would think that the world is ending. How dare you like actually respond to this in, in, in this way? And it's like, I'm not afraid to just tell you what I think, bud. Like you barged up in here saying shit. I'm just going to tell you what's up. God forbid. Yeah. Yeah. And we also have a platform so we can utilize our platform to bring awareness or sort of call out somebody. But at the end of the day, we are creators. We are we're creating with that, you know. Right. So if we can use your sort of hatred or your sort of ignorance into creating something good for us, we're going to do that. <laughs> I'm allowed to re if you have the gall to go out there and say something to me and you don't expect a reaction to it, you can't cry when I do it. Like. Mm -hmm. I'm allowed to respond to whatever I want to respond to. I'm allowed to react to whatever I want to react to. I'm very particular about what those are. It's not all of them, but don't say stupid shit. And then maybe you won't have me respond to it. Yeah. I want to talk about the battle of mental health in this space. I know you and I struggle balancing full work and you have a husband. You, I, I know, unfortunately there's like family stuff happening with you as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so balancing all of that and content creation, we have talked in depth about that. I want to talk about the importance of mental health and why it's so hard for us to take a break when our bodies and minds are asking for it. A lot of different reasons. And I think it's very different for everybody depending. Um, and the thing is, is I've been open about the fact that I've had 
you know, problems with, with mental health and doing this really did in certain ways, chip away at my mental health. And it's, it's never, it's never because people are, are making fun of me as a person. It's never because they're making fun of the way that I look or anything like that. Like I, I can handle that. It's, it's when people criticize the way that I choose to run my stream, the way that I run posting my videos, my, my, my creative process, things like that. It's so disrespectful to me because I work so hard to do those things and make time for them on top of working full time and having a family and having family issues and having health problems and trying to find that good balance. And then to have somebody just be like, oh, you're not doing enough. Oh, well, you should be doing it this way. Oh, how dare you take this day off? How dare you take this time off? And it's it's kind of like sometimes nothing ever seems like enough. And then you'll look inward, or at least I do, and I'll be like, oh, my God, am I actually not good at this? Am I am I wasting my time? Should I just stop you know, doing this and go back to being a full-time hairdresser? And even though it's hard – when you feel that way, I step back and I remember that I love doing this. I love connecting with people in doing this. I like being in entertainment. I love professional wrestling. This was a way to connect me to it because I don't have the balls to be a professional wrestler myself and take the sacrifices and risks that it would take to do that. And, you know, I, I can't imagine it's always people that are not in the position themselves. You know, it's easy for someone else to be like, oh, just take a break. Oh, just walk away. Yeah. When you've worked this hard at something and given up time and made sacrifices and done all of these things and built a community and a platform, why would you just walk away from it? Like, why would you just walk away from it? I understand mental health is important and if you're in a really bad space you absolutely should but i am also the kind of person that i'm like if i it, it would ruin my mental health worse if i walked away because i've worked mm -hmm. so hard at this i've already put so much into this what would all of that be for if i just walked away you know mm -hmm. let's find a way to make this new reality work for me where i can have a schedule where I am able to function better and, and get sleep and, and not be deteriorating my mind. And that says more about the character of a person, I think, with how they handle something versus, you know, how they let, how the internet treats them, you know, deteriorate them, just how you roll with it, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's tricky, man. I know myself I should be taking breaks. There are countless times where I am just so tired from work and I'm like, I have to stream in about like 40 minutes. Uh, I don't I have. I can't, I can't believe you do that. That's <laughs> I applaud you for that. That's hard. It's a routine at this point, but sometimes. So for the most part, it's a routine and I'm like, all right, I can get into it. Uh, but there are times this Friday was one of them where I was like, I should just take the night off. Like I have so many content ideas that I've been wanting to do, re like record YouTube videos. Yeah. And then I was like, well, let me see what's happening. And then I looked at the match card and I was like, I have to, I have to stream. Like, yeah, I got a stream and I'm glad that I did because there's a lot of good things that happen on SmackDown. And yes. that's the unfortunate part about what we do is especially within WWE, there's so many things that are happening. We just got the announcement of the women's US title. That's something that you would want to react to live. You would want to have that in your social media. I'm not trying to sound money hungry, but it's kind of like, it's your job, you know, like, <laughs> like people want to know your thoughts. yeah yeah mm -hmm. like people want to know your reaction people want to know your thoughts within your reaction you're you're giving your thoughts like you can actually see in real time how i feel about all this um and it's also the fomo part and it's also the part of like well damn like everybody else is having their reaction my reaction isn't there like i kind of feel like i'm missing out on the engagement uh-huh i me too i do it I absolutely do. I decided to take the day off and I'm still, I'm still looking and seeing that other people are posting and other people are still watching. I'm like, oh shit. Oh, like, oh my God, look, they actually got over like a hundred thousand views on this and look at, oh my God, they got over 10,000 likes on this. This would have been really great engagement for me had I 
actually, you know, sat down and streamed it. So before we transition into the Patreon part of this video, let us know where we can find you. You can find me on YouTube and Twitch at Wheezy Blonde. And then you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and X at It's Wheezy Blonde. I-T-S before Wheezy Blonde. The It's always throws me off. Whoever took Wheezy Blonde from me, I hate you. This <sighs> next one says, would you pile drive grandma or grandpa through three burning tables? I don't have any grandparents, so... That's I'm that person. I don't have any grandparents anymore, so it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> they're He's dead. They're, they're dead, so I can't uh, I can't pile drive anybody because they're in the ground. 